Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Special guest in the building today. Special guest in the building. Let me fix the camera. Good morning. Get it together real quick. Good morning. Come on, giving y'all time to come in. There we go. Giving y'all time to come in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're not rocking live with Dion and Brian. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. Y'all keep coming in. Keep bringing it in. I know y'all been waiting. Give us a second. Y'all, I know y'all been waiting. But we be in go mode. You know how we do. Go mode. Give us a second. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all tap in. We got two people in. Good morning. We got two people in. Let's get. We got three people. Good morning, Miss Gaynell. How y'all doing? Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Yeah, y'all see D in the building. Y'all see him? Call him out. Call the name y'all. out. Y'all good see him? Good morning. Good morning. We, we got. Morning. We gonna be talking this morning, y'all. We gonna be talking this morning. Gonna be giving some more people some time to come in before we start. Giving y'all a little bit more time, a little bit more time. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Tune in. Tune on in. Tune on in while we checking everything. We about to get started, y'all. And y'all know me. I'm checking levels because y'all don't be telling me if stuff uh, low or loud or not. So I'm going to just keep on checking the levels. With Dion as my witness. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. I see all y'all coming in. Good morning, good morning. There we go. Yeah, we good. Talking to the mic real quick, D. Good morning, y'all. Hope everybody's having a great morning. Hope it started off real good for you. Yeah, we good. We good. All right, y'all. Y'all know how we do. We about to get it cranking. We about to get it started. Good morning. Good morning. What was up, Zoe? Lonzo in the building. <laughs> Zo. One of the greats. Lonzo is in the building. Good morning, everybody. So y'all know how we normally do. Let's get ready. So for all the new people that's in here and everybody don't, that don't really know how we roll and how we get down, we do our morning. What's good? Good morning, Cree. I've been waiting for you to get up in here. Um, We do our morning affirmations. You know, I'll start the phrase and you guys finish it. For example, you know, if I say I am, you guys can say whatever you need for the day. I am courageous. You know, I am loved. I am beautiful. I am wealthy. I am abundant. So we're going to start that off. So I say it. I say uh, the first part of the phrase and you finish it off. We say before we start, I see you doing your thing. I usually can't what, catch you. But I'm all, OK, good. I, I hope you like what we talk about today. So I hope you like it. If y'all, for y'all, all y'all that don't know, because this is my uh, this is my homeboy, Alonzo, first time really being up in here and interacting with us. Let me tell y'all something. One of the best personal trainers in the area if you need to get yourself together you need knowledge you need anything that when it comes down to this personal training game hit him up the dude know what he's talking about he got the not only that he got the results on his page himself so there's no cap in my rap go check out the dude stuff so before we get started y'all know how we do let's start our um positive affirmations all right i am good morning bria i am balanced i will be consistent I am loved. I will be. I am grateful for. Ooh, life. <laughs> I am looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I am blessed to be alive, man. And our last one, I am appreciative of. Ooh, man. Every millisecond. <laughs> Once again, y'all, good morning, good morning, and good morning. for I, I've been announcing since this weekend. You know, it's the funny part. I announced it, but I didn't even have a guest. I, I didn't know I was going to have one. I just didn't know who it was going to be. But um, I hit up Dion. What was yesterday or day before yesterday? I think day before. I was like, day before yesterday, yeah, I hit yesterday. Dion up. <laughs> and I was like, yo, how you feel about coming? Now, here's the thing. This is the funny part. I was like, how you feel about being on the show? You know, I want to get I want to get some people in. I want to get uh, I want to start getting more interactive people into it. It's not just a one sided conversation, you know. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll be there. I said, oh, yeah, is that 8 15 in the morning i typically try to start at the same time he was like oh yeah i'll be at your house for like you know 7 30 7 i'm like <laughs> i'm like wait what because in the back of my mind i'm sitting there like you know i got the, the setup y'all can't see it i got the setup right here i was gonna go live and then channel him in on the app he was like oh no i'm gonna be there so i was like all right cool that, that ain't no problem with me shoot that's less lag i gotta worry about but introducing y'all put some clap emojis in there y'all show some love for the man himself mr Dion jones tell us a little bit about yourself mr Dion, jones, also known as D vibes. If y'all didn't <laughs> heard his music, y'all know the little, the little tag he got up in there. Let's see, where should I start? I guess hometown, born and raised, Del Cambry, Delcom, Louisiana. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, Shrimp City, Shrimp Not Festival. Shrimp <laughs> That's what that's what uh, Sis Marie said the other day. So I figured that's what uh, Delcom is known for. So yeah, born and raised Delcom. <clears throat> Come from a, a great family, so lo- loving family. Uh, privileged to to have the family that I have. Um, love music. Been making great music with you. We gonna dive into so, that later, yeah, yo. We gonna dive uh, into that. So that's that's pretty much it, man. Love God. You know, thankful for life. And let me know if y'all can hear me. I know I can, but I'm gonna turn it just a little bit more, y'all. That that little mic over there, a little sensitive. But um, once again, bro, thank you for coming through. For all y'all that that thank don't you, know, man. man, Dion, Dion, and I have been friends since I could re- as long as I can remember. I remember being a little snotty nose, <laughs> little bad child in believers family worship center, running around acting crazy, and and Dion yeah. was just. I always saw Dion either with his guitar, you know, before the Dre's, you know, me and Dion both had our little low cuts. <laughs> You know, so we, 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 walk, we walk around with the little fades. Yeah. But man, it's, it's been a long time coming. Dion is a real good friend of mine, y'all. And it's a lot, it's a lot bigger than I know. I, like he mentioned earlier, you know, we got music and stuff coming out soon and that we working on. But it's a lot, it's way bigger than the music with me and this guy, bro. Like, sure. it's, I finally have, well, not finally, I, I'm finally, because he had moved. What? You, you tell your story. I ain't yeah. going to tell you, so you tell yeah. your story. Uh, so let's see. Around this time, maybe a few weeks. You know, into December actually, but I moved to Kansas City, Missouri, uh, which was an experience, which was a great experience actually uh, for me for a, a number of reasons. Uh, but now back home, and since I've been home, me and B uh, have been working on music, and it's been super high fire. It's been powerful, <laughs> powerful to say the least. So yeah, I'm glad to be back, man. Kansas City was uh, was a vibe. But there's no place like home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's I'm glad to have you back, ball. Yeah, especially glad now. to have you back, ball. <laughs> hey, look, and y'all go catch me laughing and and doing a whole bunch of just dumb stuff because y'all he and threw about ten jokes that y'all just don't know about right now because it's gonna be some <laughs> stuff we talking about later. But um, at least I'll pop back in and still on. We should be done by like um, we should be done at like nine thirty. That's a long because I gotta go trim his Wallace at ten. But hopefully you still uh you come back so we still on. But um. Yeah, Dion didn't already say about five, ten things that y'all don't y'all don't know about yet. He been he name dropping right now, but y'all y'all just gonna see. It's, today today is gonna be good. Yeah. So I guess I'll start this conversation off with what do you feel like? Why why do you feel like? Because a lot on the on the on the show we have really been talking about like manifestation, affirmation, and stuff like that. Why do you feel like, or what do you feel like made you come back? And why do you feel like all of a sudden we are connected and making the type of music that we're making now? Wow. Man, I think uh, realization when I was in Kansas City, I mean, uh, if I can speak candidly, you know, just mm-hmm. really going through deep depression. Yeah, no, it's no filter. Like, yeah, do you think? Yeah, man, it, it was it was rough. <laughs> it was rough out there uh, for for so many reasons that uh, like right now I'm not able to go into. But just going through that, suffering from a deep depression while I was out there, uh, the thing that kept me up thing that kept me going was those calls man talking to you talking mm-hmm. to family uh just being encouraged by that and uh there was an opportunity you know for me to come back you know and it just felt right it felt like something that I needed to do for my for myself I think before moving to Kansas City I don't think I just to be honest I don't think I had the the gratefulness mm-hmm. that I that's now real. have for that's real. my loved ones you know the people that's in my life that's my day ones you know that's that real. I know that you know uh, come hell or high water they got my back mm-hmm. you know I don't think I really understood how much I needed to show more of an appreciation for appreciation for that and actually be present in mm-hmm. the, in those moments with those people because I mean we're not promised the next moment well if y'all only know the type of talks me and Dion be yeah. having bro like yeah, he's saying that and we was we was in bro well, we was on our way to bro bridge shout out to miss linda shout we out, um shout out. we was doing we was doing like a well she she is is how can i put it i don't want to i don't want to put my my own name on it while well, i give it a name it already has a name but basically she's one of the best evangelists that we have out here right and she takes church outside of the building you know i love that we went to we was in bro bridge and we had like this fellowship time and it was like we was outside they pitched like a tent or whatever but you had people like in the field you know they had people in the in 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 their cars and stuff like that people bought their lawn chairs you know they had a barbecue pit you know what i'm saying and it's like it didn't that's that's my type of church 
You know what I'm saying? Where like everybody could come together. You know, and I might sound crazy for what I'm about to say, but you know, you had your people smoking their cigarettes. Granted, I don't drink all smoke, but you had people like smoking their cigarettes on the other side. You know, it's like it was like a real, it was a real moment. It, it, it felt as though like whenever I I dare say it was like whenever God was on the earth and like He was doing this thing because there were, you know people wasn't really in churches like talking about back then. It was like He would be traveling, and going to cities and talk to people. You know what I'm saying? So I I play keys uh for Miss Linda and he plays a guitar and he um he's a, he's the vocalist the lead vocalist and like what i loved about it is like you had so many people from different walks of life you know to have some addicts over there who are recovered now you had people that then lost it all and gained it back and we was out there yeah she was quoting scriptures and stuff like that but Dion, as my witness man like the talks you know what i'm saying and like the things people were saying they went through and uh, how we, she was talking about like navigating through life they had this one dude he was talking about how he had um one of his uh well his only daughter rest her soul yeah. she had you know she her life had got ended uh real shortly because her um her boy it was her boyfriend or husband it was her boyfriend huh I think so. her boyfriend at the time was real abusive yeah. you know and then that ended in tragedy and you know he had to really get that that vengeful spirit off of him because he was like okay I really want to handle up on this dude he want he wants to kill the dude but like he knew if he would have did that he'd have went to jail who's gonna fend for him and his family his sons was addicts at the time he was trying to help him get through and he said and he's like what in his sixties look like I think he was, yeah, he was the older guy. and he was he only been believing in God for like four years. It just started like around that time so it's like he was saying how like because he's a deer hunter so like you know they had he was trying to hide the guns from himself because he already knew what he was going to do but he had found one on the road or whatever and like he had said on the mic i want to kill that sob like no fit you know what i'm saying and, and i'm not saying you know we should be in the church like just cussing and being disrespectful but like he had a real heartfelt moment yeah, and he was yeah. being transparent about how he felt in the moment yeah. and you know what i'm saying i felt like everybody that was over there could relate to it but i still like to say the talks that me and Dion be having, like, we always, we just friends like that. We just have deep conversations like that, no matter what. We could look at the sky, or we could look at a plate of food and be like, man. And then we just go in. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, it's one of the things to where it's like, um. Just appreciate me. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, we just be having talks like that. And I, I also, because y'all know me, I be talking in circles a lot. I say I like to say, bro, like, Dion is one of the few friends that I have. Because y'all remember that, that. That live stream I did, I was talking about like friends and who I can be transparent with and like friends that tell me about myself and vice versa. This is literally the example of like a perfect friend for me. You know what I'm saying? Because like he's talking about like how the talks was and when he was in Kansas and all that type of stuff. But there's been moments Dion been there for me. Or we've been in the studio together and I wasn't having like the best of days. And like being able to transparently express ourselves, get those emotions out. You know, and still move on moving forward because <clears throat> one of the main topics I want to talk about today is black men being transparent with other black men. Because we have this facade of, oh, that's gay, or oh, that's very non masculine, or this, that, and the third. If you have a guy best friend, or you have a just another best friend in general, uh, that just so happens to be a guy, but y'all can't talk about life. Y'all can't talk about like me and Dion talk about some very, very detailed stuff because it's like as a me, granted, not granted, I have a father I could talk to about anything. You know what I'm saying? But everybody, every dude got, you know, everybody got their own friend. You know, so it's like when it comes down to like the inner, the inner workings of my life or certain emotional things, you know, like if he's been through it, you know, if I've been through it and like we found ways to get through it, you know, it's like I'm grateful that I have a friend that I could be transparent with. And I, I really hope that you guys can have somebody to be transparent like that with as well. Because one of those situations to where it's like if you can't at least have a friend that can relate to you, you know what I'm saying, then what do you really have? Because at the end of the day, excuse me, at the end of the day, it's one of them situations to where we got to start taking these stigmas, especially in the black community, of being there for each other is a form of, of, of weakness. It's a form of, like, being toxic. It's a form of just not being where you need to be. You know, because at the end of the day, who else you going to run to? There's certain things, if we just going to be honest, there's certain things that women just don't, don't understand about men and vice versa. So I can't run and tell my girl best friend or my female friend. Granted, she could be there for me and talk to me and understand as best she can. But our hormones ain't the same. Our desires ain't the same. The way we think ain't really the same. It could come close. You know, we could really talk about this life thing and get down to it. But there's certain challenges and certain things men go through that women don't or, and will probably never face. Like, if let's be honest. If we talk like like in this day and age, and I'm not speaking for me and Dion when I said, but this is just me, you know, I read my statistics and books and stuff like that. You know, we have some of the highest rates of erectile dysfunction for young men starting at the age of 25. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of young people are pushing more towards like Viagra and pills and stuff like that. And who who are they talking to 
to help them get through that emotionally. Because you, you most most men, they either put a put a little swag or someone to be like, oh well, you know the shorty this I'm, you know how future them be saying I'm gonna smash you off a perk off a pill or whatever. That's the thing. But it's an underlying factor to it. Most men know it's an underlying factor to it. Well, I got to do this so I can perform how I say I've been performing rather than having those talks of like, hey, this is what's going on in my life, bro. You know, I've been doing research, but I don't know how, you know, I need to talk to a real person about this. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm see, I'm a holistic coach. I'm a holistic health coach. So it's like, I don't, me personally, I don't need that type of stuff, you know, but I know the things to do and the things to take and to help my brothers out you know what i'm saying i'm not saying he has that problem i'm not speaking for both of them, but what i'm saying is like we have that type of friendship and as most black men out here that's probably watching this y'all need to have somebody that y'all can be that transparent with and y'all can have those type of conversations with and just get through or at least try to figure it out you know what i'm saying because reach one teach one you know what i'm saying it's like you got to make sure that whatever knowledge you go through in life that's something you could pass on to your friend because at the end of the day you got a lot of guys that's out here don't really know how to get through a healthy relationship don't know how to be sexually successful don't know how to be financially successful don't know how to process their emotions but they walk around with they in this clique and they're surrounded by or they're surrounding the one person that does have it together you know what i'm saying or it seems like he has it together so who are we as fellow black men not to spread that because we're better in multitudes and numbers than we are by ourselves but that's also another ego thing but before i just keep talking and talking and talking dion what do you feel like is one of the most transparent things or one of the things that most black men need to know in order or well just in general what, what advice do you have for any young black men out there right now man honestly just open up about your mental health you know I, I can only speak from experience mm -hmm. i know for me it did wonders you know because i used to be real closed off and didn't want to open up because of some of the things that you said just right i grew up you know around that energy of like oh man you gay or you know even worse words like mm -hmm. you'll get called worse things for just being, being yourself yeah, just being yourself mm -hmm. you know and so man just open up find somebody you know to open up to you know about your mental health if you don't have somebody you know i don't maybe you could give because sometimes i often wonder about that you know uh what about the people that literally have no one? Right. You know, I, I was I'm going to let Dion go off on a tangent on that real quick and take over because I hit my two dogs by there acting the, acting the fool. Yeah, but that's, that's just something that I, I think about, you know. Um, individuals who, who really have nobody to, to talk to. Um, me, I guess my hope would be, man, somehow, some way that they can find some sort of relief um, because I, I know uh, there's a lot of people suffering in silence like I was for a while, you know, uh, feeling like, see, for me, it was feeling like I had no one to talk to when actually I, I had people, you know, and that's what I meant earlier when I said about just that growth of realization that there are great people in my life, you know, um, that care. And, and that's something that's definitely a, a blessing. It's a privilege, especially this guy, you know, just knowing that, you know. I missed all of that, y'all, but I'm going to catch up. Yeah, just, <laughs> I was just saying how, like, you know, being aware now that, like, having people in my life that care, you know. Mm -hmm. And my hope is, you know, wondering, like, what could be done for those who really feel like they have no one that uh, really cares about them, you know. Can I interject with something? Yeah, sure. Okay, I, I'll say this, y'all, and and I'll and I'll say this till I'm blue in the face. What's up, Nick? I didn't realize Nick was up in here. What's going on? Shout out, man. My bad. Shout out, hey, Miss. Good morning, Miss Gaynell. Good morning, Jayla. Good morning, Cree. Good morning, Mandy. Good morning, Nick. Nick is also a longtime friend I made in college, Good as morning, well. Good morning. But I would say, for one, before before you confide in it, and that's just my rule. Before you confide in anybody, you gotta you gotta know how to confide in God. True. If you can't if you can't confide in God and at least be real because because conf confiding mm -hmm. and being real with God in a sense is being real with yourself. Absolutely. If you because like there's things you if you can't say it in at least in a privacy to yourself to God mm -hmm. or at least you know just sit down with your journal and like really be real about it with yourself then you I don't feel like you should be trying to talk to nobody else about it because you ain't even said it out loud or compartmentalize it yet. You got people that's been raped. You got people that's been judged. You got people that's been going through a lot. And everybody be like, go sit down with a the therapist, blah, 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 blah. But they never even said it out loud to themselves. The mm -hmm. first time they'll say it, say it is to that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, be real with yourself. Great first step. Right. Great first step. And the second thing is, if you, you may, you may have, you may feel as though, that's another thing. Don't, don't be afraid to venture off and see 
what friends are actually your friends and therefore like we had to talk about friends and associates on a, a few live streams ago so don't be a, don't be afraid to you know that you might have a friend that you don't feel like is like a friend like that but you might have a friend that you might feel led to talk to about certain things just see just test the waters Worst thing they could say is no, I don't have no advice or whatever. And if they judge you, that was just your moment to see that it really wasn't your friend to begin with. Wipe them off. Third thing I would say is, and I, I and, and it's one of the things I, I wouldn't even say go to this first, you know, but this is just, you know, if you really don't have, if you really don't have nobody to talk to, because I feel like, I feel as though eventually God will put somebody in your life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you really, if you are true about it and you're praying on it or you're meditating on it, God really going to put somebody in your life for it. But if it gets to this point, you know, like find you, they got so many, they got so many real influences on YouTube and stuff like that. And, you know, try to have a sense of discernment when you go and look for something. But like, for me, I like, I like holistic mental health stuff because they talk about, they don't just talk about the problem. They, they hit the underlying problems at first. And then they talk about where all this stuff came from and all how the brain works and stuff like that. And the body works because honestly, we have two brains. We got our brain and we got our gut because it's all tied, but I, we don't have time to talk about the, the scientific anatomy of that, but just know, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger than just, Oh, I had a bad thought. It's a lot bigger than that. But, um, you know, go on YouTube. I, I like, uh, Dr. Laila Africa. I like his wife, Melanie Stevenson. Um, you can go look at, uh, Dr. I think Dr. Sabi has a few videos, but really, in all honesty, I'm a, I'm a, just a Laila Africa, bro. I watch so many of his videos. Dude is just, he's so straight to the point and he don't sugarcoat it. You know what I'm saying? So I'd say check him out. But if not, you know, go find what works for you. Cause everybody has their own path. Everybody has their own influence and stuff like that. Um, let's see the second question I'll probably ask before we start switching major topics. What do you feel like? really pushes you or keeps you together because i mean you don't have to tell everybody your life story but i know you know you've been through some stuff but what do you feel going through the life you didn't you didn't have so far what do you feel like outside of friends outside of just like everything that's going on in the world spiritually what do you do or what has kept you so far to be the young man that you are right now man that's that's a great question and i just have to say man it's just just divine intervention mm -hmm. you know i feel uh <laughs> Man, I, I, I feel, uh, for, I mean, forgive me, forgive me for using this word, but I, I feel so lucky, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, just because of how, the, the way God interacts with me in the moments, the unexpected moments where I really wasn't even focused on that, mm -hmm. and then God came in and really just changed things mm -hmm. and got my mind, like really got my mind back to a place where I was in a good space mm -hmm. from being in a very negative space. Uh, so for me, man, I mean, it's, it's nothing but God, bro. Like, and sometimes it's completely unexpected. It's like, God never leaves me. You right. Know, that's why I made the song never alone. It's like, God is always there. Even when I'm not even aware of it, mm -hmm. you know, when I come to myself, when I come to that realization, it's just a, it's just always been a impactful moment for me you know, at different instances and times in my history. So it, it's just, it's always that, man. It's always God showing up and really renewing my mind, bro. Cause like, like, you know, you know, we're, we're good friends and I could be a really good pessimist, you know, like a, yeah, gr yeah. a, a great one. You bro, know? Dion be in his head a lot. <laughs> uh, I be having to reel him out with a fishing rod every other day. <laughs> I, uh, for, I mean, you know the viewers they don't know but i mean went to ul studied philosophy so i mm -hmm. mean my my mind was already you know what mm -hmm. i mean i had a lot to think about i was right. given a lot of things to think about already on top of naturally being mm -hmm. a thinker which know? is and I, let me interject for <laughs> a second which is not a bad thing you know it's like it can be problematic if because it's, it's it's one thing when you find a lot of people that that want to know more about ideology philosophy and concepts and theories and stuff like that it's it's the brain what's going on Darius? i just i just realized you popped up in here um it's a it's a lot that comes with that because you're having to strip down what you've been programmed yeah for sure. up until your adulthood life to relearn which can cause mental fractures which can Sh cause fractures. spiritual fractures because yes. How do you let, or not even really let go? It's a it's a form of opening up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if you if you don't really open up the right way, or if you don't know how to open up the right way, and when you're trying to digest, what's going on, Kendall? Uh, shout out to Kendall, bro. You already before I even go to the whole speech. Shout out to Kendall, bro. Love you, bro. Um, before you even dive into that type of stuff, it's one of them situations to where it's like you have to be mindful. Not a lot. See, you got people that go into philosophy for different reasons. 
you know, it might I might I ask, what, okay, why did you go to school for that? Why do you why did you feel as though you need to go to school for philosophy? Man, it wasn't like it wasn't a need. I just had a a, a, a natural niche. Mm-hmm. You know, it just fit. You know, um, I was the first in my immediate family to go to school. So like, mm-hmm. I really like now looking back on it, it's like I would have went for nursing or something like that, like mm-hmm. something like occupation where it's like right out of school, you're making bank. But, yeah. but at the time, you know, it just it just felt right. You know, I love mm-hmm. to read, I love to write. Yeah. You know, and I love to think about some of the major things that's going on. You know, now being that hindsight so, is twenty twenty. Yeah. So you just you knew because you know I'm gonna ask you this. So being that you you said you would have went to school for nursing, right? How or would that, like that? How would that would have <laughs> changed you as a person? Ooh. Because now we're talking about deviating from our destiny or deviating from a version of our mm. destiny. Because I feel like I'm the type of person where it's like, what's going on, uh, Sister Tam? I feel like mm-hmm. um. I feel like I'm the type of person where it's like you have everybody has a beginning and an end, right? We all have this journey. Not don't really focus on the destination, focus on your journey because you can't get nowhere without going through something. You know, but we have multiple variations of what could be and what is based off of our decisions. Mm-hmm. Because who's to say I wouldn't even be doing this right now if I would have did X, Y, and Z in college or X, Y, and Z in, in high school, you know, yes. that really changed my mind up to this point. So what do you feel like your life would have been like, say you would have just ditched school for that and went to like for nursing or whatever else? Would you like what type of person would you have would have been or become? Man, it's 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 like it's I'm hearing it so loudly in my mind. I really just think the naivety that I had if I would have chose something else, I think that would have wouldn't have been as uh prevalent. Mm-hmm. You know, cuz I felt like there was a lot of things I just was like very naive about. Yeah. You know, while while at UL uh so I, I think if my mind would have been more so focused on something like that you know like an like a occupation that can make bank right when you graduate mm-hmm. or soon after you graduate i really feel like that would have been a testament to just not being so naive uh for me personally not saying this is for this uh applies to anybody else who might be studying something that you won't get a job right out of school and you might because my goal was to get a master's degree phd which is still a goal of mine mm-hmm. but at the time when I was, after I graduated with my bachelor's and went to visit a school, it just, it just, it I didn't just feel needed, right. Yeah, I just, uh-huh. needed, I just needed life some would time. do that to you, boy. Life would do that yeah, to you. I needed some time away from it. So I don't know, maybe the naivety, man. Maybe just, you know, not really grasping uh, what life was really all about. Because when you study philosophy, you could get so caught up in theories and all yeah. that stuff, you know? And, yeah. and a lot of that stuff is just, gibberish to be honest really it, it could be okay it could be it, that could be like the the worst you know of it but there is beauty in that which i think mm-hmm. so it, that's why i say it was more so like a pleasure oh yeah, scratching the itch which is why i say i could be a good pessimist at times Got because you. it's like exactly it's like you, right. can, you can get into things uh, where i like, like how you swung that around that's yeah, cool all like, right huh, and but that could be dangerous because that's where you start to get into now you're getting cocky and you start mm-hmm. you know you're starting to question even things that you don't even understand like god <sighs> i you mean know. you can hey look i know that i know, I know your story but if you want to die <laughs> i'm not saying you can't but look if you dive into that y'all just better grab your popcorn that's all i'm saying <laughs> no i mean it's i mean it just came to a point where i really started to question you know the existence of God just based on I mean sim- I mean simple things like you know seeing suffering in the world mm-hmm. like I said the people that literally like see how my my mind just naturally went there to someone who has nobody mm-hmm. someone who's completely destitute you know mm-hmm. in just a terrible place and they have no way out there's right. no light you know what I mean like do that, they have no way out or they feel that there's no way out they may they the truth is there is a way out now understanding there exactly is light you know there. i'm about to take it but it, it's like when you're in that space it really seems plausible that the darkness is all that there is now is, is that external or external man, just just for clarity for them now 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 see that's where you that's where it's getting interesting because mm-hmm. it could be both you know some people actually like struggle with i think you know just uh, in their anatomy, mm-hmm. you know, they're struggling. But something's going on. There's an imbalance. Right. But there could be external forces mm-hmm. as well, you know. And that was a, a side of life that I, I was ignoring. I was just so focused on, like, well, if God loved us, well, why 
why would our brains, you know, mm-hmm. have uh, malfunctions and stuff right, like that? Right. You know, just like being pessimistic, finding a reason to be upset right. when really there's a flip side to that. It is. Exactly. You know, you be, you keep so beating it, me to the first <laughs> line, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's so great to have for, like to be in friendship with you because it's like you help me to see that through conversation over mm. time and conversations when I would, you know, yeah. tell you things <laughs> and, and you know be real like. <laughs> Be real intense. Hey, for like, all y'all that don't know, when Dion start talking was on his mind, bro, that dude, that nigga get passionate. <laughs> that boy get passionate. You gonna be sitting there for about fifty minutes, like, woo. Yeah, it's like you, would, right. you wouldn't think I could talk that much. I'm so quiet, but yeah, man, uh, having those conversations with you over time, man, and just God just begin to to do a work, and not only with you but other great people, mm-hmm. you know, that was actually willing to. Hear me out and understand where I was, and not judge it. And not, exactly. Just and know exactly. that change is possible. You know, because some people uh, look at you when you're in a in a bad spot or what they deem as a bad spot, and just judge it and say you'll you'll always be there. Mm-hmm. But people like you and you know other great people that I've that I'm in relationship with, they didn't just. It was like no. Nah, you're you're gonna come out mm-hmm. of that, you know. Even and if it wasn't told to me directly, right? And I and I interject with this. I feel as though, like I said before, who said, "What's going on, Lamarcus?" Lamarcus, I can't wait to have you on here too. You another one. You got you got some wisdom in you. Um, I interject with this. It kind of goes back to what I was talking about. I think like a few days. It was like Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I want to say on the last live stream. Y'all go check that out. I was talking about how most people are just. It, and not not because they oh they're stupid but they just don't know how to get the information. A lot of people are suffering these days and going through a lot of things because of lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that like you know I I, I I always let me fix that real quick. Dang. Hey, quick quick mic check. Can y'all still hear? Because I know because when the alarm go off sometimes the thing be tripping. Oh yeah. Can y'all still hear us before we continue? We might have to just to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> 